Hi, my name is Callum Leng, uh, and I'm just doing a quick video to help people understand accretive acquisitions. So, and specifically, how do we do acquisitions using shares in a way that isn't dilutive to existing shareholders? So, um, as some of you might know, we wrote a book a few years ago, myself and my business partner, Jeremy Harbour, called Agglomerate, and basically tells the or explains the idea of having a holding company exclusively for the use of good, well-run, profitable small businesses, and the founders of those businesses swap their private stock for public stock. Uh, but the question that often comes up is, how is that not dilutive to existing shareholders? So I'm gonna explain the way we do this in what's known as accretive acquisitions. So, um, Excuse my uh, appalling PowerPoint skills, but um, I want you to imagine that you have a small business that's doing a million in profit. And like many small businesses, it's got one owner uh, and it only has one share. So the earnings per share is that one million divided by one owner, which is or one share, sorry, which is one million. Um, and typically a small business might uh, be valued at three to five times earnings. So if it's one million profit, you get three to five million for it. Um, now, actually, the reality is we're seeing a lot of businesses that are selling for nearer to one times earnings. Um, and it, oftentimes, if you hear for bus businesses that are being sold higher than five times earnings, actually, what you discover is it's based on an earn out structure where people have to hit targets over the, the coming years in order to get to those uh, multiples. But for now, we'll just stick to that three to five times earnings. Now, in the PLC world, so publicly, public, publicly listed companies world, um, it's a slightly different scenario. So we have a PLC here, it's also doing a million in profit, but because it's publicly listed, it typically might have, say, 10 million shares that are divided between any number of shareholders. And in this case, you take the one million profit, you divide it by 10 million, and your earnings per share is 0 0.1. Um, however, valuations of PLCs are typically much, much higher than valuations of small businesses. Uh, and this typically comes down to what's called the liquidity premium. So investors will pay a premium to be able to get in and out on the market of their investment, whereas if you invest 100 grand into a small company, um, you could be stuck in that company for many, many years. So that's uh, the basic setup. Now imagine that our PLC decides that it wants to acquire the small business. And instead of using cash to do that, it's gonna create more shares. So the PLC acquires the small business. It creates, in this case, we'll say it's deciding to pay five times earnings uh, using its own stock. So it'll create five million more shares uh, and give those shares to the current owner of the small business. And then it absorbs the small business. So you now end up with a PLC that's got the, it's got 2 million of profit, so it's got its original 1 million of profit plus the 1 million of profit brought in from the, the SME. Uh, it's got 50% more shares than it did have, so it's now got 15 million shares, and that 2 million profit gets split between the 15 million and the earnings per share goes up to 0 0.1333. Um, but because the valuation typically might, uh, typically would stay the same, um, the valuation is still at 20 times earnings, but now the earnings have doubled and so the valuation has gone up. Um, and by the way, globally right now, um, I think the, the average globally for a PLC is about 19.6 times earnings, uh, reality is a, is a small PLC like this would probably be trading less than 20 times, but uh, we're just trying to stick to simple maths for my sake and yours. Um, so the question then is around the, the dilution. So yes, absolutely. If you were an existing shareholder of the PLC and you add another 50% more shares, yes, as a percentage, your holding of the PLC has been diluted. But the metric in PLCs to, to focus on in, in this particular instance is earnings per share. So the value of your existing shares has now gone up. In small business world, percentage is incredibly important. 
Um, but in PLC world, the value of your shares is way more important. Like most small business owners would swap 100% ownership of their small plumbing company for one or two percent of Google, for example. Um, so the percentage is not nearly as, as important as the value of those shares. Um, so you can take that, uh, you can kind of extrapolate that out. This is actually from a, from a different set of figures. Um, so I guess uh, you can go through this in your own time, but the, the key thing to notice here is um, assuming all things are equal, you can keep adding this profit in, the market cap goes up significantly. Um, the share price growth gets smaller with every um, acquisition that, that you do. So in order to kind of keep that level of growth, you would probably look, or certainly we look at two strategies. One is adding ever bigger companies into the group, um, but equally doing more of the, of the smaller deals. And so, so you can continue to, to build up. Um, but you can see it's an incredibly uh, effective way to grow shareholder value, which kind of begs the question, why doesn't every PLC do this? You know, they've got a highly valued stock, which is a currency that they can use to acquire earnings from different companies. Um, well, there's a couple of reasons. One is that uh, actually if, if a company uh, like Facebook, for example, just started buying any random company that, that had cash, um, it would confuse investors about what, what the, uh, the business was. And, and so it would kind of start to get marked down. Whereas a conglomerate or an agglomerate in our case, uh, can do this because it's the, it's the principal reason of business of the company. Um, the second reason, which I think is probably more accurate, is that oftentimes when, small, when businesses acquire other businesses, their first port of order is to try and impose their own will on them. So, uh, and this was really kind of why we started Agglomerate, because we kept seeing really great small businesses being acquired by bigger companies that had ostensibly acquired them because they were small and entrepreneurial and, and fast and uh, reacted to the market well and all of these things. And then as soon as they acquired them, they tried to make them more corporate-like. So they imposed their own rules and regulations and suddenly the uh, SME kind of destroys a lot of the value and oftentimes the talent left it. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a cure all for everyone, but it does work incredibly effectively for us because in our model we swap shares uh, we swap our high value shares for the private shares of the small businesses and then we leave the founders in control to run the business uh, the way they do and what you end up with is a highly incentivized uh, diversified management group um, that have proven success in their small business and, and now have the authority and autonomy to keep growing and make decisions on, on the front line. Um, if you'd like to understand more about it from a business owner's perspective, do reach out to us at unitygroup.com. I uh, would be happy to send you a digital copy uh, of Agglomerate. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn is probably the best place, Lane Callum or Callum Lane. And thank you very much for watching.